Spirit of God, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Amen. I want you to take the limitations off the Lord. Hallelujah. There's nothing God can't do. Hallelujah. And we know that through all things, amen, God can move, He can change, He can fix it, He can turn it around for your good today. God is up to something. God. And we are right in the middle of it. Something good is happening for us today. Praise the Lord. Oh, gracious God, our Father, you give them all good and perfect gifts. We thank you. We honor you and we give you glory. We ask that you continue to show yourself mighty in the lives of your servants. Those that are yet on the prayer request. We thank you. And it's yes. done. We thank you. Complete deliverance and healing yes. is done. We give you all the praise. Yes. We give you all the glory. Yes. In the mighty name of God. Yes. Now bless us on today as we worship you yes. with the spirit of excellence. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the glory. We honor you and we are thanking you in advance that it's done. We celebrate you that you have turned it around. Yes. That you are looking on my yes. servant. Those that are struggling with various conditions of cancer, respiratory, swelling, and aches in their joints, migraines. God, we bind that condition today. Hallelujah. We are thanking you that it's done. We are praising you that it is done. In the name of Jesus. Touch that son. Touch that daughter. Touch those great, those grandchildren. God, turn it around. Divine mental illness. Divine stupidity. Touch that dog and help her go home. In the name of Jesus. Touch that son with respect and honor his parents. God, we are. We thank you. We are praying for deliverance. God, we thank you. We thank you. And we know it's done. And we celebrate you all today. We thank you again for allowing us to see the ninth month of this year, 2024. Whatever your will is concerning us, we say yes. Whatever the assignment is, we say yes to you. We're obedient to your word. In Jesus we pray. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. As you remain standing, amen. Dick and Ivan Clark. It's coming with the reading of the word. Amen. Yes, God. Good morning, saints. Good morning. Good morning. Bless his name. Bless his name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I'm coming from Proverbs 4, chapter 4, first verse. Hear my children. The instructions of a father and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, Let your heart restrain. My word, Amen. my commandments, and live. Amen. Give wisdom, give understanding. Amen. Do not forget, nor turn away from the word of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Amen. Love her, yes, and she will keep you. Yes. Yes, Thank God. you for the reading of your word. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We will bless your name. Hallelujah. This has to be a personal thing, right? Each and every one of us individually, hallelujah, have to get that commitment, hallelujah, to God. And say, God, I will bless your name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because we know, we know bless you. Hallelujah. The rocks will cry out.
that the Lord God is amazing. I'm going to give you God a praise. Give him a hand of praise. How good he's been. He's always come through. Hallelujah. He's an old time God. Hallelujah. Whatever you need from the Lord, you can receive it today. Amen. Amen. I am totally convinced that I'm going to serve God. I'm going to give him all that I can give him. And if I was playing uh, Texas Hold'em, I'm going to do what they say. When they know they got the best hand, I'm all in. Hallelujah. Amen. You got to be all in. Amen. If you intend to receive the favor of the Lord. Right. Truly, right. we're thanking God for his mercy. We're thanking God for the miracles that he is working in our behalf. Yes. Amen. He says, in all things, give thanks. Uh -huh. This is the will of God concerning you. We just want to go right to the word of God. And we are thankful. Amen. We appreciate First Lady today. Amen. 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 Doing a, a fabulous job. Amen. 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 Continue, continue to give God glory and we honor God. all of you on today. Amen. If you would be so kind to stand with me at the reverence and reading of the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to go to the book of Exodus. Familiar passage. Exodus chapter 4. Verses 1 through 4. Praise the Lord. Amen. Exodus. Second book of the Old Testament. Chapter 4. Verse 1 through 4. Hallelujah. It says, Then Moses answered and said, but suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say the Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, what is in your hand? He said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. Yes, yes. Moses fled from it. Yes, then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. Uh -huh. and he reached out his hand and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. Yes, we pray for the anointing. We pray for wisdom and favor. Yes. That the reading and the hearing and expounding on this word will be of a blessing to your servants. Yes. Someone here needs to know you are there. Yes. And you are able to do more abundantly than we can even ask or think. Yes. We ask this in your name. In Jesus, we pray. Yes. Thank God. Amen. Amen. But well, before you sit, I want you to just tell your neighbor, neighbor. it's in your hand. It's in your hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You already got it. You just need to believe Amen. it's in my hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moses feared caused by worrying about how people might respond to him. Hallelujah. We often panic over what might go wrong. God does not ask us to go where he has not provided the means to help. Trust him. 
to supply courage and resources at the right moment. A shepherd's staff was commonly a three to a six foot wooden rod with a curved hook at the top. The shepherd used it for walking. Amen. Guiding his sheep. Killing snakes. And many other tasks. He used this wooden rod for. Still, it was just a stick. But God used the simple shepherd's rod Moses carried to teach him an important lesson. God sometimes takes joy in using ordinary things for an extraordinary purpose. What are the ordinary things in your life this morning? Uh -huh. Hallelujah. It could be your voice. You can use your voice. It could be a pen. You can write book or you can use a pen to use to do the will of God. A hammer. You can build the house of God. There's ways you can use with a hammer. A broom. Huh? A musical instrument. While it is easy to assume God can use only special skills. You must not hinder his use of the everyday contributions you can make. Little did Moses imagine the power his simple staff would have when it became the rod of God. Whatever you give and whatever you use to do the will of God, God will bless it and it will be an anointing for you. Amen. Amen. We as servants of the Lord, we need to recognize it's in our hands. We already have it. We need to use what it what we have to build the kingdom of God. Yes. There are folks who are struggling. There are people who are sad and hurt. They need to hear a word from the Lord. They need encouragement. Uh, they've been rolled down and they've been up the rough side of the mountain long enough. And you have it in your hand to get them to be led to freedom. In John chapter 9, verse 4, it said, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man can work. Our presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Shear, our chief apostle, is given a theme and a mandate for the national church worldwide. We got work to do. Uh, that's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Okay. The word of God had commissioned us to go into our highways and hedges yes. and to compel men to come in Amen. that my house might be full. Oh, Taking an interest in individuals that need help. That's right. Okay. Winning souls. Yes. And all they asked us to do is before the end of the year is to win one to Christ. Jesus meant as long as he was still on earth like his disciples. The phrase does not mean that Jesus somehow stopped being the light of the world once he ascended. But the light shone most brightly among men when we and he was on the earth doing his father's will. Amen. Hallelujah. I must be about my father's business. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Even in John chapter 4, verse 34, Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me. Look at that. And to finish his work. Oh, bless the Lord. Ah, there are assignments that God has placed on your life. Hallelujah. And you're going to have to accept the calling. That's right. Ah, amen. You're going to have to accept the responsibility to do what you have commissioned me to do. Praise God. Ah, and you're going to have to say, Lord, I'll go. Amen. Ah, amen. We don't want to do like Moses. Try to use all these excuses and reasons. I can't talk well. I don't have good speech. And I'm tongue-tied. I get nervous. And, oh, my. Ah, he even said, let my brother do it. Ah, but see, the Lord said, what you got in your hand? Ah, and he said, that's what you got to use. You got to depend on God to use what you already have available to do the will of God. Ah, the meat about which Jesus was speaking about was his spiritual nourishment. It includes more than Bible study, prayer, attending church. Spiritual nourishment also comes from doing God's will and helping to bring his work huh, of salvation to completion. Hallelujah. We're being in Bible study. We're being in Sunday school. Huh? We're being in prayer and being in worship. You are getting all of this ability and all of this favor of God. We got to put it to work. We got to reach out and touch these young lives. Our children and young people that need the encouragement. Need mentoring. Ah, we need to put it to work. Spiritual nourishment also come from doing God's will and helping to bring his work of salvation to completion. Praise the Lord. We must nourish not only by what we take in, uh -huh. but also by what we give out for God. Thank you, Jesus. Every one of us has something in our hands that God can use. Right. Moses' ordinary being a shepherd, or a sheep rod, became the rod of God. Hallelujah. Even in Exodus chapter 4, verse 17, it says that you shall take this rod in your hand with which you shall do the sign. Look at that. Oh, hallelujah. Even in Exodus chapter 4, verse 20, then Moses took his wife and his sons and set them on a donkey, and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. Huh? Amen. He took his family. He went back there to go to work. Oh, God is is, is when God is on your side, you don't have no fear. Huh? You're not intimidated of what the enemy is going to do. You're not caught up with what folk are going to say and how they're going to look at you. Huh? And, 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 and say things that you think you all are that. Huh? You have confidence in knowing that God said, I will be with you. Huh? No weapon formed against you will prosper. So they went back. Hallelujah. Moses took the rod of God in his hand. Then God told Moses to use the rod. Uh, when you have something to be used, uh, God will anoint it and you can use it wherever you go. Exodus chapter 7. Verse 19, then the Lord 
spoke to Moses, saying to Aaron, take your rod and stretch your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their rivers and over their ponds. Look at that. And over all their pools of water, that they may become blood. What you got in your hand, boys, I got this rod, this stick. It becomes the rod of God. And he told Moses, hey, now stretch it over the every source of water that is in Egypt. It became blood. He used the rod to do it. Oh, bless his name. And over all their pools of water, huh? It became blood and there would be blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Both in buckets and wood or eight pitchers and stone. Wherever there was water stored, it became blood. Hallelujah. Ah. Exodus 8 and 16 says, So the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, since you can't talk good, huh? Stretch out your rod and strike the dust of the land. Ah, so that it may become life throughout all of the land of Egypt. He'll play the life trying to get a stubborn king to soften his heart and let the people of God go. So therefore, he took this had the, the rod of God and he struck the ground, huh? Hit the dust of the land. And here come life throughout all the land, every inch of the, the, of the state or the country of Egypt had life. Oh, praise the Lord. And you know life is very irritating. Hallelujah. No comfort, no peace when you are dealing with an infestation of life. Uh, uh -huh. And then Exodus chapter 9, verse 23. And Moses stretched out his rod towards heaven. Uh huh. And the Lord sent thunder and hail, and fire darted to the ground. And the Lord rained hell on the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. Now I want you to understand this hell was not like a marble. This hell was like a softball. Ice that was falling from heaven they never saw. And anything that was caught in it was killed, was destroyed. Hallelujah. All because he used what he had to point it towards heaven. Look how obedient he was. When God gave the commission, he did what he was told. He didn't question it. He didn't say whether to the left or to the right. No, he did what God commissioned him to do. Use what you had. Hallelujah. To do the will of God. Then in Exodus chapter 10. Verse 13. So Moses stretched out his rod. Over the land of Egypt. And the Lord brought an east wind. On the land all that day. And all that night. Oh, look at that. And when it was morning, the east wind brought locusts. It brought locusts. It brought them grasshopper things. And boy, I'm telling you, they were in everything. In their clothes, in their cabinets, in their, huh, whatever they stored, it was festive with locusts. Because, huh, God had anointed what he had in his hand. Whatever you have to offer, whatever you want to use to do the work.
will of God, God will anoint you. And you've got to believe that God is on your side. And I'm going to accuse you. Huh? If I'm having problems, I'm going to, I'm going to point, I'm going to point it to him. So Lord, you get it. Hallelujah. Wind blowing all night long. Oh my, then when the morning came, brought locusts. God and Moses to use the rod to bring about those plagues. Hallelujah. Then God sent the death angel which finally persuaded Pharaoh Praise to God. let the Israelites go, yes. but they got to the Red Sea. Oh, I want you to understand here, church, that anytime God blesses you and delivers you, don't ever feel that it's done. Uh -huh. The enemy ain't happy about you giving up, living for the, for the world, and you are giving up to live for God. Uh -huh. The Bible says he goes up and down seeking whom he may devour, and he goes and he finds trying to find rest, but he can't find none. And the devil tells him, Self, I'm going to go back to that house that I was kicked out of, and I'm going to repossess it. And the word says that you become seven times worse than it was in the first. Right. So if you drink in hoodoo juice, you're going to drink more hoodoo juice than you ever drink. If you've been up and been delivered from a liar, you're going to do more lying than you ever lie. You're going to hurt other folks. Hallelujah. But when they got delivered, when the king finally, Pharaoh said, I'm going to let them go. I'm tired of this get gone. Huh? And they begin to leave after the death angel had taken the lives, amen, of those firstborn. Oh, bless the Lord. And as they got out, amen, happy and, and, and celebrating that we, we, are, we are delivered, we're free, then we come to the Red Sea. Ain't none of them know how to swim. Uh, they ain't had no swimming lessons. They had no rafts and no boats. And they didn't know nothing about this Red Sea. They ain't never seen it before. For 400 years they were there being slaves. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do now? That's what the enemy will do. He will make you look at the situation that I don't think it's going to work. But what do you have in your head? God. Uh, that 16th verse of Exodus 14. But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. Huh? And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground. You ain't gonna get no mud on their joints. Huh? They ain't gonna get no mud on their feet. Huh? You're gonna go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And you know when water and a sea yeah, and the ocean, they tell me that it is so saturated, it's like quicksand. You hit it, you can just sink. You just go down. Hallelujah. But the Lord said, stretch out your rod. You might have a Red Sea situation that is in your mind. Stretch it out to God. Stretch out your faith. Believe that God's going to turn it around for my good. Soon or later, it's going to be I'm going to have the favor of God. They were able to walk across that Red Sea. Hallelujah. On dry ground. Hallelujah. The kettle and the cops and all of the wagons, everything that they had. Oh my, this whole nation of people was able to cross over. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. All because the man of God used what he had. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We need to consider what you have. 
You need to think about what do I have that I can do huh? to, to do the will of God. And then you might even have a Pharaoh situation. Hallelujah. Oh, we can stretch it. I'm telling you, with the, with the move of God, it will turn their heart. Huh? Amen. To where they meant it for evil, the Lord turns it into good. We need to work to build the kingdom of God. We can use what is in our hands to do the work today. Praise the Lord. Huh? Even in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. You remember this? The man of God showed this widow woman that you must use what you have in your hand. And in this case, yes. what's in your house? Yes. Hallelujah. You might have something in your house that you can use. Oh, huh? Ah, oh, we are familiar. Amen. Amen. That the, the widow woman husband died. He was a servant. He was a prophet. He was a man of God. He worked and he served the Lord. And here, he was a main source of her income. That's right, that's right. And then since he has transitioned, the debtors were expecting payment. Yeah, yeah. And you know as well as I know, they can be very cruel. Cool. They don't care if you don't feel good. They don't care if you're uh, uh, suffering or what have you. They want to pay me. So they told her if you ain't able to pay it, we're going to take your son. We'll take your boys and make them servants. And let them work off your day. Hallelujah. And she told the man of God her plight. Told him what was going on. He said, what you want me to do? He said, what you got in your house? She said, I ain't got nothing in there but a jar of oil. Hallelujah. Just a jar of oil. Amen. The man of God said, get your son. And you all go to your neighbors and friends. You go throughout the, 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 the community. You find every vessel, every jar, every bowl, every cup. Everything, anything that can hold oil, get it. And put it in the house. Huh? Sometimes you already got your blessing. Already in your house. Hallelujah. You just got to realize that this I can use to do what God needs done. And she turned around and they went everywhere they could. Oh my goodness. They filled the house with every type of container. And then he said, go in and shut the door. Just you and your boy. Sometimes you got to shut folk out. Some of your ace boom boom need to stay home so you can hear a word from the Lord. There are things that God has commissioned us to do huh? that we got too much distraction. And we need to be able to be able to be focused on what God has commissioned us. All I need is just a job of oil. Something that's significant. I can't fry nothing with it. I can't do nothing with it. But the Lord said, take it and shut up in it. Oh, I think one time we gotta have a shut in. Call the boy and the mama. I want y'all to be in a shut in. Hallelujah. And they said, he said, give me some more. And they said, all oh, is been filled. And the man of God said, then you take it and you sell it so you can pay your debt. Huh? You ain't got to go out there and then put yourself in voting trying to get out of debt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh? All you got to do is use what you have. You got to 
give it to the Lord and you what God has commissioned you to you. Oh, and whatever's left, that's for you and your son. I'm going to tell you, God will let you have the leftovers. Ain't nothing wrong with leftovers. Hallelujah. And he even said the women will save the whole house. Huh? We don't give up on nobody. Huh? We're going to stick with you. If you're, if you're raggedy, you just my raggedy brother. Huh? I'm going to love you anyhow. Why? Because I got to do the will of God. Whatever you have, whether it's in your hand or in the house, don't stop praying. Keep believing God for that daughter, for that son, for that husband, for that wife, for your grandchildren, for the grown children. Just keep trusting God. Lord, I'm going to use what I got. Because I know you can turn it around for my good. In the name of Jesus. I can see the breaking of day. God is coming my way. A change is coming for me. It must stand strong. Thank God.